Okay, in the previous class, we uh, we defined this quantity called the tangent cone. Okay, so the tangent cone, remember, um, wa, uh, you, how the tangent cone was defined for two things. One is a set, a set S, and say a point point x star that lies in the set. So, for example, if this is a uh, point x star and this is your set S, then the tangent cone T of x star with respect to x was defined as those directions D by which it is possible to approach the point x star from within the set S. Okay. So, D so, uh, is, so tangent cone is those D's such that there exists a sequence x k that lives in the set S x k converging to x star and a, a tau k that decreases to 0 such that d can be written as this limit x k minus x star divided by tau k. Okay. So, what we uh, uh, learnt was that if you look at this sort of sequence that is eventually converging to x star. So, here is my point x star suppose and my this is my sequence that is it dances around all over and then eventually gets uh, converges to x star. Then this 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 ratio limit as k tends to infinity x k minus x star divided by tau k this ratio is actually capturing the tangent to the trajectory of the x k's it, as x k goes to x star it is this is the this is the tangent to the trajectory and my intuition for that uh, that I explained was that you should think of x k minus x star as the distance between x k and x star and, and tau k as, as a unit of time. So, this is like a velocity right, it is the rate at which x k is approaching x star. So, it will eventually become tangent to the to the precise curve that x star uh, trajectory that x star uh, x k tra uh, traces all right. So, these were the, so, the, so this is you can think of the tangent cone as the limiting directions limiting directions through which it is possible to approach x star from within S. And what was the significance of this tangent cone? The significance of this tangent cone was that it captured a very general necessary condition for optimization. So, if you have a general function f, just that f has to be differentiable. So, let us take continuously differentiable and x and you are mi minimizing this function f over all x in a set S. A S can be any kind of set, can be a polyhedron, can be not a polyhedron, can be convex, not convex, does not matter any set S and you are optimizing of uh, an arbitrary differentiable function over it, then we had this result that x star, if x star is a local minimum of this optimization, problem, then it must be the case that the gradient of f at x star makes an acute angle with all vectors d that lie in the tangent cone at x star with respect to s. So, this is a, an extremely sweeping and uh, a general condition and it is probably the most general condition known to us about that that captures a necessary condition for a point to be a local minimum. Unfortunately, there are just for you to know this is not actually sufficient. So, note that even though this is the most general condition, it is not in general sufficient. Okay, there are counter examples uh, that uh, of, of uh, uh, where you have a function uh, that is that where you have 
uh, very of a function and a set where this condition is satisfied that means this condition here the underlying condition is satisfied but the point x star is still not a local minimum okay so it is not sufficient uh, there are so this con this condition may be satisfied may be satisfied point x but the point x star may not be a local minimum all right the other thing we saw about the tangent cone was that the tangent cone is actually a treacherous object means that you might think that if you have suppose two sets S1, S2 and a point X star that lies in both S1 and S2 and if you wanted to find the tangent cone with respect to the set S1 intersection S2 at X star, then this is not in general the, this set. So, it is not in general you cannot construct it by simply taking the tangent cone of uh, uh, of the point S star with respect to S 1 and with respect to S 2 and then taking the common region of the other two. If you do this you would in general get a, a much larger set. So, this is so the intersection is actually just a subset of this larger set. Okay. So, but still having said that this turns out to be our it turns out that in optimization this is still our best bet what we uh, so the way optimization theory proceeds is that it tries to see put conditions uh, so conditions to make this equal okay so we conditions to make somehow make this equal and that's what i will try to discuss today okay so what uh, so for this let's let's go back to a uh, let us go back to a uh, optimization uh, the form of an optimization problem. So, now instead of taking an arbitrary set S and, uh, and an arbitrary function like this, we will describe the set in a much more specific way. So, we will now uh, write the set using its constraints. So, consider now an optimization, optimization problem of the following kind, you are minimizing a function f subject to constraints that look like this g i of x less than equal to 0, where i goes from 1 to n. So, you will notice that I have not used uh, equality constraints here and that is for a reason I will bring those equality constraints in uh, subsequently, but for the moment let us just focus on this particular uh, type of optimization problem right. So, and so here you have uh, you have f of x as the objective and g i of x uh, is is uh, from i equal to 1 to m these are your m constraints each g i is and f itself they are all functions from r n to r ok. So, each g i of x is a is a scalar function and we will assume uh, assume that they are all uh, continuously differentiable. Let us assume that they are all continuously differentiable. Okay. So, now what we will what we will do is we will see if we can somehow get to an understanding of the tangent cone of this particular set. Okay. So, we know that if you uh, so this here the, the feasible region now S which is x such that g i of x less than equal to 0 for all i from 1 to m. This is nothing but the intersection of these regions. It is the intersection of these individual sets. Let us call these S i right. So, if I want to know what the tangent cone at a point x star in S is then that amount I can try to see if I can get to this by looking at the tangent cone 
of x star with respect to each of these s i's right. And the hope is that this would turn out to be the same as the intersection of all of these. Now, we know that this is this is in general not true ok, but we will try to see when we can make this work ok all right. So, now let us now uh, let us do a few simple things. Now, if you have a what is a constraint like this g i of x less than equal to 0, if I have a constraint like this uh, where g is a continuously differentiable function, what sort of what does that constraint look like? So, that constraint if you see it is so here is here is a region that 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 constraint describe. So, the boundary here of this region is say g i of x equals 0, the inner the interior here is g i of x strictly less than 0. So, if you have a point x star that lies here in the interior of this for such a point g i of x star must be strictly less than 0. So, here that is that must be the case. So, it is a point. Uh, so, it is a uh, it is a point for which g i of x star is strictly less than 0. So, for this sort of point what would be the tangent cone with respect to s i. Now, this sort of point lies in the interior of the set and we had seen this last time that if you have a point that lies in the interior of the set then the tangent cone is the entire space right. So, you can approach the point from every possible direction in the ambient space right. So, so consequently for such a point you must have that the tangent cone is actually R n. So, if you if so what this means is so if out of these sets or out of these constraints g 1 to g m if any of them are satisfied with strict equality at x star, then they do not the tangent cone with respect to those sets do not appear will not appear in this intersection because they, they, the tangent cone there is just r n right. So, this here is therefore, can be written in the following way you can write this as the intersection over i in a set a of x star and I will define what a of x star is. where a of x star is nothing but those i's for which g i of x star is exactly equal to 0. Because once g i of x star is strictly less than 0 the tangent cone is r n and it has it plays no role in the intersection right. So, in other words what when I have to try to describe my uh, the tangent cone with respect to my full set what I I have now brought the problem down to just this one part which is that I need to now describe the tangent cone with respect to the set s i right. So, I need to with respect to the set s i for those i's that lie in the set a a of x star a of x star is what is called the active set. Yes. Yeah. So t of x star uh, with respect to s is okay. We are hoping that this can be somehow made equal to this intersection here, right? I'm hoping that this can be made equal to this intersection. But then in this intersection, if I look at any uh, those i's for which g i of x star is. So if I look at an i for which, say, g i of x star is strictly less than 0. Then such an x star will lie in the interior right and then for around that x star I can fit a ball and also uh, in the that will lie completely in the set. So, the tangent cone with respect to that particular set s i would be r n right at the point x star. So, so that is why in the, when I look at this intersection here those i's the uh, the i's for which g i of x star is strictly less than 0 will not count in this intersection because they are all r n right. So, what will remain is only only the i's for which g i of x star is exactly equal to 0 ok. 
okay and those are what we call the, the that the set of such eyes they are called the active set or the, the eyes are themselves called the active constraints. So, we say that a constraint is active. So, a constraint is said to be active if if if, if the at a particular point ok we say the constraint constraint i is active at x star if g i of x star equals 0. Now, to be uh, this this the active set ok remember is a function of will change with x star at a point x star at this point the active set will be uh, the constraint that I have drawn here it is not in the active set ok and maybe another constraint like this this may be in the active set here this sort of constraint this is this is in the active set because it uh, you know it uh, x star lies on the boundary. So, if I take this sort of constraint here this is in the active set ok, but if I so and if but if I change my point x star to this point here suppose if I take this as my point x star then this constraint will now become active my earlier one which was not, not active earlier will now become active whereas the and whereas uh, whereas this one will not be active anymore the green one will not be active anymore right. So, whether which constraints are active really depends on the point x star ok some, uh, some uh, uh, certain constraints may be active certain constraints may be inactive etcetera. But the point is once we uh, once I give you the x star I can uh, I know immediately which constraints are active and to and if I have to look at the tangent cones then all I have to do is focus on the tangent cones of those individual constraints all right ok. Now, let us look at a one of these individual constraints now let us see if we can make sense of the tangent cone of any of these individual constraints when they are active ok. So, let us see suppose suppose I have a constraint uh, like this. let us uh, for simplicity let me just change the direction for the moment I will just write this as a greater than equal to 0 because that is uh, that is easier to explain ok. So, suppose we have a g i of uh, x greater than equal to 0 is my constraint ok. Now, if I look at uh, you, you what we are tempted to think is that well the tangent cone and because g is continuously differentiable what we are tempted to think is that well I can capture the tangent by looking at the gradient of the function g i right. So, I am looking at a point x star which is on the boundary ok. So, what I need to do what I really geometrically what I need to do is look at all these directions by which I can approach the point x star all of these directions and eventually all the way till I get to the tangent surface the surface that is tangent to uh, to this constraint at x star all right. So, this is so, so the because I have written it as a greater than equal to I have I have this g i of this region is g i of x strictly positive this boundary is g i of x equals 0 and so on. So, what I want to do is to get to this tangent. So, geometrically this is actually correct the trouble is how do I get a formula for this means I have to I need to I have the right geometric picture here I yes I need a tangent and so on, but what is the formula for the tangent and what should how do I express that tangent using the function g. Now, if you if I drew a circle for example, here you would know how to draw the tangent well the ta you would know how the, what the tangent is and you would know what the formula for that tangent also is. 
well what do I need to do? I need to look at the gradient here, the gradient will be pointing uh, uh, is going to be an is going to be a normal look at the uh, look at the normal the direction the direct and direction in should be in the direction of increase of the function ok that is where the the gradient will point and then using that I perpendicular to that would be my tangent right the space that is perpendicular that is whose normal is this particular gradient is would be my uh, that would be my that would be my tangent. Okay. So, let us see if we follow through on this what you would think would be uh, how would you capture this particular space well it would be the space that is perpendicular to the gradient at this point okay. and now where would the gradient at x star point see gradient of uh, the gradient of, so the fun this region here this region here has g i of x strictly positive and as you get to the boundary g of x has become 0, the gradient should be pointing in the direction of increase of the function right. So, the gradient of of uh, uh, of g i at x star will be normal to you will be normal to this boundary and pointing inwards right. So, this is where you would think this is where the gradient would be. So, this here would be gradient of g i at x star. So, if and then you would think that well what would be this space then what would be the tangent cone in that case well you would think that the tangent cone would be those d's that make such that gradient of g i of x star transpose d is greater than equal to 0 right. So, it is all these directions d which make a acute angle with with this gradient. So, all of these directions up till the point where you become tangent. All of these directions are you would think are in the in the in the tangent cone. No, no. So, the unfortunately the convention of the tangent cone is that it centers it at x star. So, it is x k minus x star. So, the origin has been shifted to x star. So, it is always origin from x star uh, into uh, towards x k ok. So, that is how you define the tangent code yeah that is unfortunately that is the been the convention although uh, I mean it is easier to explain it as the directions by which you can approach, but it seems like you are point go heading towards x star, but actually if you see it is the other way around ok all right. So, this is what you would uh, you would guess would be the tangent cone at a point x star. So, what is this? So, just to uh, summarize this you have a point x star such that g i of x star is equal to 0 and you would think that such a for such a point the tangent cone would be equal to this. This is what you would think, but the trouble is this also is not true. So, if you a simple case like this where you have a point x star which is on the boundary you have a differentiable function you know the, the you know what the normal is uh, you can calculate the normal and so on and you would uh, yes you would think that well the, uh, the tangent cone should be equal to this the problem is that also is not true and the reason for that is this simple problem that, uh, which is the following so this constraint if i look at this constraint g i of x greater than equal to 0 right. This constraint is actually the same ok. So, if so this constraint is actually the same as the constraint g i of x the whole squared is greater than equal to 0 ok. So, or more more specifically we can even I will it is probably easier to see this with the in the case of an equality constraint. So, maybe let us do this for an equality constraint and I will I will I will I will be able to convince you more easily. So, suppose so this was for the case of a, of a greater than equal to constraint suppose if I had uh, if I had a surface like this if I had a equality constraint suppose I had a surface h of x equal to 0 and I had I took a point x star on this surface 
you would think that the tangent to this would be would be something like this. This would be the direction of the gradient of h at x star and you would think that the, ta the tangent cone with respect to that sort of set would be d such that gradient of h at x star transpose d would be equal to 0. Right, almost following the same sort of uh, reasoning as before. The trouble is this is where the uh, it starts begin begins to break down because h of x equal to 0 is equivalent to h square of x equal to 0 and h square of x which is equivalent further to any you know say h cube of x equal to 0 and so on. I can keep taking powers of h and I will continue to get the same set. And the, so, what is the reason for this? The reason for this is you this h of x equals 0 is the same as you know any power of h of x also equal to 0, but then what is the problem that this creates? The problem is that yes I am looking uh, if I look at the gradient of of h of x ok for the same set for the same set I apply this particular formula on the one hand I will get gradient of h for on the other hand I will get I will get something like this I will get 2 h of x gradient of x and what is h of x at that point 0 which is equal to 0. If I if I apply it for this one I will get 3 h square again gradient of x. You see the problem that has occurred the problem is that the same the same set of points geometrically the same set of points can be represented in multiple ways using algebraic constraints. And when we say we have we know the formula for a normal and, and so on all of that presumes something about the fact about how we have represented the uh, represented the constraints algebraically. Right. So, surely it can this is not fair right this is not uh, this is not acceptable that the same set give, will end up having multiple different will have uh, very different formula based on how you have represent chosen to represent it right. So, this is this is the trouble. So, the trouble where is the challenge what what is the reason for the problem the reason for the problem is that basically the there is a gap between the way we the optimization is proposed as a geometric problem as a set of points over which you want to optimize versus how you want to represent those geometric points using using constraints right. So, the representation is is it is what is coming in the way here, but how do we know what is the original h of x. But how do you know that uh, it cannot be reduced further. See the point is that it is uh, the normal the geometric normal is not necessary the issue is exactly this the geometric normal is not necessarily the gradient. The gradient it could be 0 even though there is actually a normal to that set geometrically there is actually a normal to that set and there is how will we know what the actual normal is from the formula. Right. So, what I wanted to illustrate in this was that there are there are basically multiple ways by which uh, you can you can represent the same same geometry.